Hyde Park, London. Perfect for walking the dog, an early morning run, or wandering about in period costume pretending you're a 19th century writer. The writer in question is Oscar Wilde, already the subject of two films made over 30 years ago. This version of the writer's life concentrates on the 15 years when many of his greatest works, like The Importance of Being Earnest and An Ideal Husband, were written. It's also, of course, the period of his life when his private behaviour increasingly became the talking point for an outraged Victorian society. Wilde was regarded as the wittiest author of his generation before allegations of his homosexuality led him to jail and eventually exile. It's a life that clearly adapts well to the cinema, but is there really a need for a third version? The last two films were done, oh, years and years ago. I mean, nearly 40 years ago, I think. And uh, since then, many, many things have changed. If you see them again, for instance, in the Peter Finch version, you will notice that it's very difficult to tell what the fuss is about. What were Oscar and Bose doing that was so bad and naughty? You know, they don't mention it. It's before the Wolfenden uh, recommendations have been put into law. That's not to say the purpose of it is to show nude scenes and, you know, lurid acts of... Of penetrative sex just because one can because that's really nothing to do with it at all it's simply that one can really address the problem of sexuality and and of Wilde's complex life Fry himself has been a comedian a writer and a stage actor but the role of Wilde has given him his first lead in a feature film I, I have to just to get into the part. I have Christmas, someone probing behind me. Christmas, I didn't consider other actors but when I met Stephen um, I was I was, um, well, there was no other choice after that. Stephen is extraordinarily uh, right for him. He's the right height, he's the right physical build, he's the right age, he's very funny in his own right, he's a writer. I mean, he's got everything. Robbie is Canadian. You can tell by his youth. Cut! And we've cut, thanks very much. Very good, we'll do another. Robbie's Dutch, you can tell by his buttocks. Ah. I met someone who knew him and apparently gave a very good impression. And he spoke like this. You know, but the fact is, it would just be so appalling to sit through a film someone's speaking like that. Um, there's very little doubt that he did not have an Irish accent, although he was born in Dublin. He himself said that um, his Irish accent was one of the many things he forgot at Oxford. And, um, you know, so it's, you know, it's not talking like this. You know, <laughs> it should be rather, rather annoying if they don't do it well enough. We were made not to marry. Whereas you and Constance are so happy, everyone says so. It's perfectly monstrous how people say things behind one's back that are absolutely true. So your audience has proved as responsive as you hoped. Receptive, yes. Responsive? I always wonder what she's thinking. I expect it's about the baby. Yes. Well, Constance is such a natural mother that she's invited Robbie into the nest while his parents are abroad. OK, we missed the last line. We'll lose the morning light. Please. We're losing the light, Toby. Yeah, well, let's get a move on. I just say not to move off immediately from this position. So, they, when 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 uh, Stephen and Zoe join. Um, let's just see where the, where the joining plate is. I don't this morning we were um, filming a scene. Robbie Ross was a great friend of Oscar's and um, his first lover, in fact. And Robbie lived for a while with Constance. I'm Constance, Oscar's wife, and lived with us for a while in Tite Street. We catch up with, with Robbie and my wife, and um, there's just a little bit of eye contact between Robbie and Oscar. It's just the moment really Oscar's to discover his sexuality, I suppose, that's where you put it, because Robbie was the first man he ever slept with. Robbie really seduced him. It was just a little sort of family scene of walk in the park, but there was a lot of sort of undercurrents too. Are you planning to govern a continent? Oh, no. I don't even plan to govern myself. People who are prejudiced uh, about gay um, sexuality, they have to confront Oscar Wilde, and he's... Um, he wears his genius so lightly, he's such a wonderfully good-humoured man, um, as well as being much more profound than he's ever been credited with being. So I hope people come away thinking, 
What a terrible tragedy that he was brought down in the way he was.